Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. In this video, we're going to be talking about characteristics of a function when we're looking at a graph. We're just going to look, and I think it's easiest if we just kind of start moving through these because there's a lot of things that we need to be able to look out for. First is going to be domain and range. Now, I've already done a video on finding domain and range in detail, um, so I'm not really going to go into them a lot here. It's just going to be kind of a light review. Um, if you need to go and practice with domain and range, you would want to check out my video on interval notation. Go back and look at that if you need to, but for this particular graph, finding domain, we read it left to right. In this case, it would be negative infinity to positive infinity. And remember that our infinities always get parentheses. Another way to write that is our double line R, and that stands for all real numbers. Anytime you have the double infinity there. Our range in this case, remember we read bottom to top, so it's also going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. And if you wanted, you could instead write that as a double lined R. Increasing. Increasing and decreasing are kind of tricky. We just have to remember a couple things, that for increasing and decreasing, we only look at the x-axis. We don't care about y at all. Um, the other important thing is that we read this graph left to right, always, just like a book. So left to right. So looking at this graph, reading it left to right, I see that we're moving down. It's kind of like going down a roller coaster. So this graph does not increase at all. When we want to know an interval of increasing, in this particular case, there is none. It's not increasing at all, and it's not going to increase. So we would just put N A. Or you could put none. Don't put zero, because that zero is a number. Um, but you just want to put that it's there is none. Decreasing. Yes, we are decreasing from here all the way to the end of the graph. And we will be a decreasing for infinity. So we want that interval of time based on the x-axis when we are decreasing. So in this case, looking at the x-axis, now some people would say, oh, that falls at negative 6. Well, no, that's just where the arrow is shown. But that arrow indicates that this goes on forever. It doesn't stop at negative 6. In this case, because we are talking about the x-axis, it would be negative infinity because it's going to the left. So remember, infinities always get parentheses negative infinity, and then for how long is it decreasing? Well, it's going to be for the entirety of this line's life, okay? All the way to positive infinity, and some people might say, but that's going down. Well, it's going down on the y-axis. On the x-axis, it's going up, so we call that positive infinity. So this graph is decreasing from the interval of negative infinity to positive infinity. Our next thing we need to be able to pick out is if there is a minimum point, and the key word there is point. Now, on your tests or quizzes or homework, it doesn't always write point, but it's assumed. So if it asks for minimum, you just think minimum point. Ask yourself, is there a lowest place on the graph where this line will stop? And that is the lowest point, the minimum point. And the answer is no. I see this arrow, and I know that this graph is going to go on down for infinity. So there is no minimum point that I can pinpoint. Um, some people would want to say, well, infinity is the point. Well, no, infinity is just an expression that means it goes on forever. It's not an actual point. In this case, a lot of that to say there is none, N A, or none. Is there a maximum point that I can that I can literally point to and say that is as high as the graph goes and it will never go beyond that point? No. This graph, as far as height, is going to go up towards infinity. So again, we got a lot of NAs on this one. X-intercept, finally, something we can answer. So we want to know where does this graph cross the x-axis? And it may happen at nowhere. It may happen at multiple places. In this case, it only happens once. We see right there. Now, different teachers have different preferences of how they want you to write the x-intercept. I prefer just for you to write the actual point. I know the x-intercept occurs right there at that point, and that point falls at 1, 0. 
So I like to write that point as one, zero. For our y-intercept, so now we're looking at where does this line cross the y-axis, and I see it happens right there. And so I want to list out that point, full point as well, and that's at zero, positive one. Now, end behavior is kind of interesting. End behavior is a phrase that you really need to memorize. Sometimes teachers will give this to you as like a fill in the blank format, and sometimes they're just gonna expect you to write the entire end behavior. So you really need to memorize it. As X approaches, that's what that arrow means, approaches. As X approaches negative infinity. Y approaches, and this is what we have to think about. So let's think about that. As X approaches negative infinity, well, if this is our origin, and we're talking about the X, as X goes this way, right? Because that's towards negative infinity on the X axis. We have to ask ourselves, what is Y doing? What is that line doing? Um, and typically, your answers are going to be, it's either going up, it's going down, or it may be leveling off sometimes, like going in a straight line to the left. Um, in this case, it's going up. And the way we note that in end behavior is positive infinity. It's going up towards positive infinity. So as we read this, as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches positive infinity. But then we have to have a, a second statement that as x approaches positive infinity, what happens to the y? y approaches what? So in this case now we're starting back at the origin and we're saying as x goes this way, as x approaches positive infinity, what's happening to my arrow, my blue arrow in this case? Well, it's either going to be going up, going down, or leveling off. And in this case, it's going down. So down means negative infinity. So those are the statements. So sometimes teachers will just leave this part blank and they want you to fill in the endings um, because this right here from the as all the way to the y approaches, that does not change. That statement stays the exact same every single time. These two little endings are what changes, um, but I'm gonna say go ahead and memorize the whole thing so that you can be able to write it out if you need to. Let's look at some more examples. Looking at this graph, this is actually an absolute value graph. Don't need to know that right now. We'll get into that more later, but it's a good thing to note. For our domain, remember domain, left to right, in this case, negative infinity to positive infinity. And remember, if you want a fancy way to write that, double line R. We'll know what you mean. For range, remember bottom to top, so in this case the first thing I hit is arrows. Remember arrows indicate at the bottom indicate negative infinity. And then what's the top thing or the last thing that we hit? Well this is actually a point, so it falls, it is a solid point, which means it's going to get a bracket, and it falls at positive 5. Range is talking about the y. So 5 with a bracket. We could not do all real numbers on that. That's only if it's the double infinity. Okay. Um, as far as increasing and decreasing, well, I've got to look at each graph individually. In this case, remember, we read it left to right. Um, so here, we see that we are increasing on this section right here. It's kind of like going up the roller coaster. And then from here on down, we're decreasing. We're going down the roller coaster. So we do have both an increasing and a decreasing on this graph, and we need to state what both of those are. The interval of x for the increasing and the decreasing. Um, so let's start with increasing first. So it's a stretch from here all the way up to here. We are going up. So we start with, we always read left to right, we start with an arrow. Remember arrow indicates, hopefully you're saying, negative infinity.
Now, when we move up here, we'd want to say on the x-axis, remember I said on the other graph, we are only talking about x values with increasing and decreasing. I do not care about the y. Okay, so I see this falls at zero. And I know this is where increasing and decreasing are a little bit confusing. I know you're thinking that's a solid point and it falls at zero. So I should have a zero with a bracket. The weird thing about increasing and decreasing is you have to ask yourself a question. Is this point a place of change? And what I mean by the place of change is, does it switch directions right at that point? In this case, I'm kind of going straight, going straight, going straight. And then when I hit this point where it also stops increasing, it switches and it goes down. So because we call that a place of change, it automatically gets a parenthesis, even though it's a solid point and you want to put a bracket, it's actually a parenthesis. So that is the trickiest part about increasing and decreasing is remembering that. So let's do decreasing now. So I'm decreasing from here to here, from this interval to this interval, or from that interval of time from here to here. So it goes from zero, and remember it's a place of change. So that zero gets a parenthesis and it's decreasing all the way to positive infinity. Even though it's going down, we're looking at our x values, okay? And the x values are going this way, and that's positive infinity. And I mentioned this in my other video, you will never have a negative infinity on this side. You will never have a positive infinity on this side. If it's on the left, it's negative. If it's on the right, it's positive. So that may help you remember. Okay, let's move on to minimum point. Is there a lowest point on this graph that I can literally pinpoint and say that's as low as the graph goes and it doesn't go any further? And look, some people would say, well, that there's that point or there's that point. Well, those aren't points. Those are arrows. Okay, so they're going to keep going on forever. So is there a minimum point? Nope. You will never have infinity as a minimum or maximum. Um, and now maximum point. Uh, we do right up here that it never this graph will never go above positive five. So we want to actually list that point. So it falls at zero positive five. Our x intercepts, um, we've got two here. I've got one right here and one approximately right there. We'll call, we'll, we'll say that that's positive five. I hand drew this, so we'll give my, me a little grace right there. Um, so I need to list both of these individually. So first, let's say this falls at negative five, zero. And, because we do have a second one over here, um, positive five, zero. For our y-intercept, we just have the one right up here, that point again, and in this case it is our zero, positive five. For our end behavior, remember we've gotta have that statement. As x approaches negative infinity, y approaches, and this is the part that changes, it depends. This stays the same, this little fill-in is going to change. So let's think about it. As x approaches negative infinity, what's happening to the picture? What's happening to the purple line? It's either going up, it's going down, or it's leveling off. In this case, it's going down. Down means negative infinity. But we got to have that second statement. As x approaches positive infinity, y approaches what? And that little what is what we fill in. So as x goes this way now, it's either going up, going down, or leveling off. Let's see, in this case, it's going down. Okay, so you guys try this one. This is actually a parabola. This is a quadratic. We'll get more into those later. But I want you to try, say, what is the domain range? Is it increasing? If so, from where to where? Um, decreasing? If so, from where to where? Is there a minimum point, a maximum point? And what are those end behavior statements? So I will post the answer in the description of this video. This has been Miss Smith's Math Tutorials.